Hello, welcome back to Oracle DBA tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to discuss about DTL logs. So as we discussed in our last video about different types of logs, and then we talked about DML log in, in detail in the last video. And in this video, we are going to discuss about DDL log. And then why do we need DDL log? So basically, DDL logs are to protect schema definition while the object is undergoing on some sort of you know ddl okay so so let's try to give an example and that will that will be clear say for example in this is my sql session one so this session one and then i have another session so let's say this is called session two okay so this is session two and what i'm trying to do I have a table EMP and I'm trying to alter that table. Okay, so alter table EMP and let's say, let's say I'm going to add a new column and that new column is called say a new cell. Okay, so I'm going to add a new column and the column name is new cell. So while this alter is going on, you know, from the session one, so I, I just give this uh, statement to execute and this is getting executed but it's not completely done okay so it takes some time let's say it takes one second to to complete this execution exactly at the same time another in another user from another session give this kind of statement so drop table emp okay so i i just told this you know these things these two statements are just gone uh, at exactly at the same time and this is the first one to be executed so while this thing is executed i should not able to drop this thing okay so in that case what's going to happen we are going to acquire a ddl lock for this okay and that lock you know this session or this transaction which is doing this alter table that should acquire a lock on emp table so that other users cannot drop or cannot do any destructive interaction with that object okay so that is the goal of ddl lock ddl lock protects schema definition so ddl, DDL statement protects the schema definition of while The object is acted upon by an DDL. Okay, so example. So when this DDL is going on, I just want to make sure that this DDL should finish properly. And this DDL will only finish properly if we have a table called EMP. All right. So therefore, session two should not do that. So again, the DDL logs are of different types. So so let's. Okay, I can do it here. So basically, there are three different types of DDL lock. The first lock is called exclusive DDL lock, and the second one is called shared DDL lock, and the final one is called breakable. Parse lock. Okay, so DDL locks are of the three different types, and then what we are going to discuss, we are going to discuss in the next slide about these three different types of lock and when these locks are being acquired. So what we are discussing is DDL locks. And the first one is. exclusive detail and the second one is shared detail and the third one is breakable pass locks okay so the example we have discussed in the previous thing like you know whenever this alter is going on this will acquire a exclusive ddl lock 
Okay. The exclusive DDL log will be acquired by this transaction on table EMP. And until how long this log will be there? This log is going to be there until the execution is over. So what do you do? So that is the reason why a DDL is always auto commit. Basically, immediately after this, the statement is done, we are going to wrap with a commit statement. That is the default behavior of Oracle. Like you know, whenever you are running a DDL, it will make sure that after the DDL is over, it will give a commit. Okay. So it, so so basically, you know, it will start the lock when it is. It will it will acquire that lock when starting to execute this statement. And when it commits, that statement is finished. Transaction is done. It will release that lock. So it's very few. You know, you know, these locks really is a very is just come and go kind of thing. Okay, so it will just acquire and then it will be released as as soon as possible. All right, so this is exclusive DDL lock, and then for shared DDL lock, this is basically to protect structure of reference object against any modification by other transactions. So let's try to understand what does it mean. Let's say an example. I'm going to create a view. Called create, say create view x as I'm going to select from select star select uh, select something from EMP comma department. Essentially, while this view is being created, okay, so I'm giving this thing the view is view is getting created during that time. Nobody should change. Other transactions should change any definition about EMP and DPT. So the schema definition of employee and department should not uh, should not be allowed to change once this create view statement started and not it done. Okay. So to get that thing done, what Oracle will going to do uh, automatically is going to lock employee and department table. A shared DDL lock. Okay, so in this case, employee table and department table will be locked using say shared DDL lock, and then this lock, the shared DDL lock, will still allow to insert, update, delete from this from this table. That means content can be allowed to change, but the definition, the schema definition of employee, like you know, if employee has seven rows, sorry, seven columns, then you cannot, you know, you cannot remove a column or you cannot add a column. So those things are not allowed, and that is where we protect. So basically, essentially, you know, using a shared DDL lock, we protect the reference object. And in this creation of the view, these are the reference object. And regarding the last one about the parse lock, so this is how it happened. Like you know, whenever you are giving a, you know, like a query, or you are, you know, let's say you you do a query, say select star from EMP. So what happens is that an execution plan will be created for this query, and then it will be stored in your SGA. And remember, uh, recall from whatever our architecture class that we are going to have a shared pool, and in shared pool we are going to have a SQL area, right? In the SQL cache we are going to have the parsed value and the execution value, execution plan for this select statement. So let's say we have we have this you know the executed uh, execution plan for this select star from EMP. So when this happens, whenever this so this is called parsed statement, and whenever we are going to parse this thing on the employee table, Oracle is going to put a parse lock. Okay, the employee is going to, going to put a parse lock, and then as long as you know this you know this execution plan is there in the SGA. There will be a parse lock. However, if somebody in another session, right, the another session wants to go on and then drop that table, so another session is go on and drop EMP. They can drop EMP, not a problem. In that case, what is going to happen? This lock and this this parse statement of you know select star from EMP is going to be invalidated. Okay, is going to be invalidated. So that means it's a no more a valid parse or execution plan. And then the lock was, you know, the lock that you know the parse lock what was there, it's going to be broken. Okay, so the parse lock is going to be broken. Parse lock is broken. Okay, the parse lock is broken, and 
it and then uh, this SQL statement is invalid. The SQL the parse SQL statement is invalid. So essentially, you know, this kind of parse log will not disallow anybody else to change or modify. Like you know, for example, in all other things. Will wait. Will wait for the transaction to be complete so that other, other so that the second transaction is going to go and then change. Okay. But in this case, in this breakable parse log, so basically, you know, it, it, you know if somebody else wants to change or modify, they can modify, and in that case, the lock is going to be broken, and then that is why it is called breakable parse lock. So this is all about you know about uh, DDL locks, and then. You know, and then these locks just uh, make sure there's very, you know, short duration locks, unlike the other DML locks that you that you learned before. And with this, we completed the second part of video lock. So basically, sorry, second part of the locking. So we have done DML locks in the last video. In this video, we are done with DDL lock. In the next video, we are going to discuss about internal lock and latches.